Hey guys, today in the shop we have a 2004 F550 with a 6.0 liter diesel. It's got a repeat water and fuel light and a stripped out water separator drain. So this is a pretty common occurrence. A lot of times what happens, uh, especially on, I see it more on trucks that are like a cold weather truck where you get a lot of the moisture content in the fuel. Um, in New England, we get really bad fuel quality in the winter. Uh, some of the other northern states will like it. Um, I'm not sure about you southern guys, but I'm, I'm sure that you got water and fuel issues pretty similar to us. But what happens is you get water built up in the separator and... You drain it out, should be regularly. Some guys don't do it enough, but it should be drained out at, at a pretty regular interval. I'd say around 5,000 miles. When you do your oil change, you should be draining your separator out, even if you're not doing a fuel filter change. But either way, what can happen is you get some sediment built up in the bottom of the uh, water separator, and you go and you drain it out, and the light still comes back on. Sometimes it's right away, sometimes it's after a little while, and uh, I've seen a lot of guys just throw fuel conditioner at it, more and more fuel conditioner. I think it's the station they're getting the fuel at, so they go to a different station, try to change that up a little bit. But realistically, at the end of the day, you got an issue with your separator housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one off of this truck here. I'm going to show you what we got going on, and then I'm going to go through a fuel filter change. And I'm also going to show you something about a nice little updated drain plug that will make your life a little bit easier. All right, for those of you that aren't aware, on the fuel pump housing, fuel pump assembly down on the frame rail. The uh, little six millimeter Allen bolt right here is the drain plug to, to drain the water out. Um, like I said, it should be, should be done pretty regularly, especially in the winter months or any time that the, the air quality or the, even the fuel quality has a, has a lot of moisture content. Um, typically, the more humid it is outside, you can get a lot of moisture in your fuel but uh, also when it's cold, you get condensation in the tank, and that can cause the water to settle at the bottom. Um, also a good reason to use high-quality fuel filters. If you do use cheaper fuel filters, a lot of times they don't separate the water properly, and all that water is going right into your injectors. So on this one, the actual Allen head hole is in good shape, but um, from overuse, over-tightening, sometimes... That can happen pretty easily. The aluminum gets corroded. The threads themselves are stripped out on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this whole housing, and then I'll show you the inside, and you can kind of get a look at, um, at what I was talking about that's causing that repeat water and fuel light. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is unplug the water and fuel sensor. It can be a little tricky sometimes. And if you have the really old version, there's going to be a plug on the left side of it or the back side facing towards the, uh, the rear of the truck. And that plug is for a fuel heater. It's obsolete now. They, they did without it. And this one actually just has a plug hanging out. They do make an updated harness that doesn't have this plug on it at all. So when you go to replace either your fuel pump assembly or this housing, there's no longer the fuel heater on here. So if you see that on your old one and it's not on the new one, don't be alarmed. First step I like to take is I like to loosen up, just make sure they come free, the four bolts that hold this housing on. The reason I say this is sometimes the fuel can actually siphon out of the tank. So if you take the lines off first, and then you start messing with those and the bolts are rounded off and you can't get them out. Now you just got fuel constantly dripping out and it's pretty annoying, makes a big mess. Definitely something you want to avoid. All it takes to get this off is a quarter inch socket. Um, the new housing does come with bolts. So if they are kind of rounded off and you, you got to use like a turbo socket to get them off, it's not a big deal. Um, you do get replacement bolts with that. Now you can go ahead and pop these retainer clips off. They just push up out of the way. As 
So on the side towards the front of the truck, you need a tool like this. Um, there's a couple of different options. I'm going to put some links down below for them. Um, you definitely need these for the front. On the back side, it just has little push clips that you just push in and slide the line off. They're a little bit of a pain. If you don't have uh, strong fingernails, you can use like a small screwdriver to push in on them. And you got to kind of wiggle the lines around and they come right off. You definitely want to make sure you have a bucket ready because this makes a mess. Once you get the lines off, you can go ahead and uh, take the bolts the rest of the way out. And then carefully remove the housing. So as you can see, the whole bottom of this separator is filled with this brown crud. It's pretty much a combination between sediment and water. It kind of turns into like a mud-like solution. Um, so how this water and fuel sensor works is there's two terminals and the water completes the connection, turning the light on. So once this crud builds up in the bottom, it ends up tripping that light on. And sometimes you can clean it, but I've had much better luck just replacing the housing. So reassembly is pretty straightforward, just uh, reverse the disassembly steps. Just be careful not to over tighten those four little bolts. They really don't need to be that tight. They're, they're real small things and you could easily strip out the fuel pump. Um, make sure you clean the housing out. If any of that crud is on the other side towards the fuel pump, try to get the best you can. Use a little bit of brake clean to wash it out and uh, make sure you get all that sediment out of there. And obviously now's a good time to do your fuel filters. Another little tip while you're in there, this brass drain plug. Um, the nice part about this is it's a factory Ford part. It came on the, the low cab forwards, the cab over trucks with a 4.5 V6 power stroke. And the nice part about it is it goes in and when you loosen it up, it just dangles like that. So you don't ever have to worry about dropping the, the plug or anything like that. Sometimes you drop into a bucket when you're trying to drain your, your water separator and it makes a big mess. The other nice part is you can really take this thing out without tools as long as you don't over tighten it. Um, it's got a nice knurled grip on it and it does still have a six milliliter Allen port in the front. So if you need to get a socket on there or an Allen wrench, you can loosen it up, but you can just reach right under the truck. It makes draining your separator a lot easier. Well guys, I really hope this helped you out. Uh, even if it just saved you a little bit of aggravation, sometimes that's it's worth its weight in gold. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. And thanks again for watching In the Shop.